heard this song is called Happy in the Sorrow Key, the acoustic version. <laughs> As I lay my burden down now In the cradle of an elegy In the shotgun shape of this life I'm happy, happy in the sorrow key We, we schedule time for it. I mean, we, you know, for writing, I, I mean, I haven't been sitting down to write like I normally do in the past year, probably. <laughs> um, my process used to be like five days a week, even I would sit down and just write just for, just to stay in it. And it just became this thing I did. But since I had a child, um, I'm changing that. That has changed quite a lot. I'm trying to figure out how to navigate that, you know, and still write, um, as much. I just write in shorter increments now. I mean, if anything, over the years, it has become more like a discipline and more like a job, really, to just set aside some time. But with a little kid, it's harder. Um, but my wife and I make a calendar, and so I allot certain times to write and then just go up to my studio and, and do it then. You start off with the guitar? You kind of start writing melodies on the acoustic? I, did, I recently have really been into the ukulele. Oh, cool. Sometimes a banjo. Hmm. Very rarely a piano, but what I find whenever I pick up is going to, what I'm going to write on a ukulele is completely different from what I'm going to write on guitar. So it's kind of a neat way to, um, it's, I'm quite sure that I'm going to find something different, which is fun. I write on mandolin some. Actually, I'll tune down to D on mandolin. Um, I like to tune the E string down to a D. It's, it's nice. It's a nice droney kind of sound. Um, I write on electric a lot, actually, even songs that end up being acoustic. Just to give myself a different, you know, thing. I mean, I'll, there's certain electric guitars that I write a certain way on. First, we usually write the basic chords out, write the lyrics out for each other. Sometimes we'll start with the harmony arrangement first. And sometimes we'll start with the instrument arrangement first. It just depends on the song. And um, I think it's just whatever we feel attracted to first, like whatever is easiest maybe even, whatever might be the easiest starting point, like the most, the inroad into the song. I loved Simon and Garfunkel and like to listen to them. I used to listen to them 
and switch from left to right on the knob so that I could hear just Paul or just Art's part and look and see how it was kind of like two melodies instead of really that. It's like I thought of it that way. I was never much of a harmony singer. And Emily and I started singing together and Emily could do harmony to anything. So it was very exciting, you know, that we could just instantly do music and she could sing harmony. And then over the years I learned how to sing harmony, but Emily would teach it, teach me how to do that. But I think it was just the, for me, the striking thing was like just the way our voices sounded together, I guess. Mm-hmm. And Mystery um, is off Swampophilia, which you guys are going to be performing at this festival that... Uh... Justin Vernon invited you guys to Bonnie Bear. Yeah. Pretty exciting. It is exciting. I mean, we're both huge fans of his artistry, and he's a great guy. And I don't know. I, Amy got to know him before I did. I only know him a little bit, but I really like him. Of course, I love his music. And But it was a huge honor to be asked to play this festival because it, it's just a neat uh, group of musicians and performers and writers playing together. So we're psyched. And he chose the album, right? He chose the album. And then on this record, One Lost Day, we used his uh, engineer, Brian Joseph, to mix the record. So we went up to April Base in Wisconsin, an absolutely idyllic place, and it was in the middle of winter. It was fabulous. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So we kind of, we've crossed, and then we, you know, visited with Justin and his family and their friends, sort of, there's a lot of connections between our camp and his so it feels re- it's it's flattering to be invited, but it's also cool because we just really like him so much. He he emailed and he he emailed me and he was like, "I have this wild idea, you know. I want to get you guys to what would you what would you think of this?" It was always like a hypothetical, playing the whole album Swamp of Fear from start to finish live. Wouldn't that be just? And I was like, "We're totally into it. Like, <laughs> please follow up on it, you know." <laughs> and so he he had all the wheels turn and all the management and booking and all that jazz that has to happen you know but but it was or you know he's very yeah it was a very organically curated festival I think I think he just kind of picked the hodgepodge of people that he would like to see play together which is a great thing when people do that you know this one's called mystery Why do you spend this time? 
like sugar on your lips You'd like to stand in the line of fire Just to show you could shoot straight from your hip There must be a thousand things you would die for a ship in the girl tonight breaks a bottle to christen her basking in the exploits of her thief she's a very good listener maybe that's all that we need is to be in the middle of impossibility standing at opposite poles equal partners in a mystery Standing at opposite poles Equal partners in a mystery That Share the Moon is like five years old maybe? It was on um, Beauty Queen Sister and I wrote it, uh, I wrote that one at like, I don't know, four in the morning or something crazy. It was like one of the, usually songs take me a long time to write, like years. I'll be working on 10 songs for five years. I'm just rotating them, you know. Um, but that one I was staying, I was working on a solo record actually. And I remember because I'd kind of had an argument with my friend who was producing it. Not an argument, but we had, he just was dissing on my songwriting a little bit. And um I went back to my hotel and I was just like, you know, I'm going to show him. And stayed up till like the crack of dawn in Greensboro, North Carolina, working on this song, which was, it's not one of my favorite songs. It's funny how that, how that, and, and it's the only song that he ever, it's one of the only songs he ever commented on too, after the fact. Like he was like, you know Beautiful that song? song? That's a great song. And I was like, if you only knew. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a great writer and he's a great musician and a great producer and he's a friend and I just it's good he's he's my catalyst for trying to do better you know you everyone needs that in their life I can go one day without calling two days without balling Three days without missing, but a lifetime with no kissing you. Something that I just can't do. And I wish I could be there to share the moon. I got more back for the breaking, more callous for making. A lifetime for the aching I got no need to run this battery down I'm just trying to get the stains out And I wish I could be there To share the moon Hey, la, la. Gonna love you till it hurts I don't mind if I do Hey, la, la. I'm gonna love you till it works I got no mind to lose Who One trash heap burning Them fireflies are returning Nightfall is softly chirping One trail of light is staying on till dawn And I wonder who it's waiting on 
I wish I could be there to share the moon. Hey, Lala, I'm gonna love you till it hurts. I don't mind if I do. Hey, Lala, I'm gonna love you till it works. I got no mind to lose. Emily and I just uh, had a little exchange over email, and I know your first guitar you got really young. Your parents bought you a guitar for twenty four bucks, yep. a nylon string guitar that you still have. Yep. How many other guitars do you have? You saved that one. A lot <laughs> over the years. Um, some of them have come and gone, but I mean, this is a Martin. This is a J forty. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like um, I use two guitars primarily on stage: acoustic guitars, and the other one is a D forty five made made out of Koa, cool. uh, also a Martin. And Amy's songs tend to be, I want a more muscular guitar um, in terms of musical sensibility. So this guitar is more muscular and in sound. And the other one is a little more, I use it for more of my picky stuff. Mm -hmm. And I usually play it on my songs. But I also, I love all stringed instruments. So I really love ukulele and banjo and just anything that you can pluck, you know, or go like this and make it make sounds. But Martin guitars are my go-to acoustic instruments and what about you Amy? I love Martin guitars and it's been mostly what I've played but but about five years ago I got a Gibson a 55 um, Gibson J45 that I fell in love with yeah. and it's a for me I started writing just pretty much country songs on it for like a country project I was working on and and things that were more in that vein I guess like Americana vein but then I discovered that it also sounded good on some more muscular, kind of strummy stuff. So it's, it became a really good utility, utility guitar that could sound good on a lot of different styles of music. But I love my Martins. I had, I've had this for, it's one of the earliest guitars I ever bought. Um, I have like a gut string that I had from when I was teeny, like nine years old. And I have like a really, really weird, like Sears and Roebuck steel string that's like steel strings. Oh, cool. You still you know? have that? Yeah. I don't even know what kind of string it's like steel it's like not even like guitar strings it's like metal you know <laughs> and um it's at my mom's and we we have it by the piano and play it oh. around the piano sometimes but um but this martin um from the 40s it's an 018 and um it had been refinished and i i've done work on i've had like the bridge worked on and stuff but when i bought it it had already been refinished as hence the kind of shininess of it but um i got it pretty early and i played it forever and um, it's been through a lot, and uh, I had this 018, which I like for, um, it's funny, it's, it's got a really big sound, and really tight, yeah. but, I, but on, I like to play it on like uh, D, open D songs a lot of times, um, it just phew, sounds really big, you know, and then um, I have a J40 that's black that I love for like, just rock, yeah. you know, just, j just like jangly rock, it doesn't sound very good finger picking, for me, but it sounds great on just stuff I can just attack, you know. And um, those are like our first nice guitars, right? Yeah, those are our when first we got nice guitars. Signed, Her J40 and, and mine. Nice I got a black one. She got a blonde one. Yeah. Um, and then I have a great um, D28 uh, that is from the '70s that I love. I mean, it's a. I bought it because it sounds great on all of Emily's songs, and I. And but it's never. It's funny, I never gave it the credit it deserves because it actually sounds good on everything. It's a great guitar and it always sounds good. I don't have to do a lot of work on it. Um, this guitar I have to fuss with a lot intonation wise and stuff, but it's like, and the actions, I like action really high and I like medium string, so often my intonation's a little out. I have to get special things done to the bridge and stuff like that. I have a couple old mandol Gibson mandolins oh, cool. that I love from the 20s that are A's. I don't 
I'm not a good enough player to like play an F and do all that bluegrass stuff. I'm just kind of a strummer. So I like an A because it's really loud sounding. And um, I can just do like mountain music on it and just be loud and kind of raucous. And so that's, that's what I do for that. Yeah. I write all my songs on my Taylor acoustic because... Ah. Sounds great. Um, because the action... Amy's like, I like high action, medium strings. I like low action and light strings. Because you're actually playing. I'm just going... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's cool. It's one of the reasons why we work together so well musically. Just the, just the different sounds that come out together. But I do love those Taylor guitars for... I use it in my dressing room every day on tour. And then I write all my songs on it when I'm writing on acoustic guitar. And then I play the Martins on stage. I love Taylor guitars. Yeah. This is a song I wrote from our new record. The record's called One Lost Day, and this song is called Learned It On Me. There comes a time eventually when the cold black water goes under the bridge. So I say yes, we can meet up It's been too long and life goes on And I can do this You wanna thank me for everything you've learned For what went wrong and how I paved the path For the corner that you've turned And this is what you've learned That what you lack from love Is not a lack in someone else Everyone has baggage to be carried And you learn that one plus one is one plus one It's never more or less But what you finally got if you got married I guess I should be happy I'm the course that set you free Just wish you hadn't learned it all me real not a bag of tricks and you were always just more gifted at illusion you are thank me for everything you've learned from the hard knocks and the troubles and the point of no return on the bridges that you burn what you lack from love is not a lack in someone else and everyone you finally got it, you got married. I'm glad your education made you happy by degree. I just wish you hadn't learned it on me. Guess I'm glad that I've seen you face to face Is this just slightly more cathartic than a letter? But the line is pretty fine In fact, it's pretty much erased Between humility and making you feel better And some is false, some is true And now I know That it's just me and it's just you And it's just the way it goes now that book is closed What you lack from love Is not a lack in someone else Everyone has baggage to be carried And you learn that one plus one Is one plus one It's never more or less Best of luck to that girl you married Smiling on her little learning tree I wish you
cool. Great. Yeah.